On today's show, we look back at 2015 at the HDB resale market. Next on XTV with your host, Mark Loon. Hello, I'm Mark Loon. Happy New Year. 2015 was an interesting year in the real estate market. If you could use one word to describe it, it would be stalled. Brief look back at 2015 and answer a few burning questions about the HDB resale market. Question 1. How did HDB perform in 2015? In terms of transaction volume, activity in the HDB resale market has been consistent. However, 2015 did slightly better with close to 18,000 transactions compared to around 16,000 transactions in both 2014 and 2013. And in terms of price, 2015 and December index is at 136.1, which is a 1.3% dip compared to 137.9 in December 2014. As you can see from transaction over X value graph, the TOX has been hovering around zero for the second half of the year, suggesting that prices have stabilized and adjusted to the existing market conditions and HDB policies. Question two, what were the top HDB flats that were sold in 2015? The second most expensive HDB resale transactions, we have a tie here, Jalan Marmo, a rare HDB three-room terrace house, and Pinnacle at Duxton, a five-room HDB overlooking Singapore from the 28th floor. Both these units transacted for $1,060,000. And the most expensive HDB resale transaction for 2015, Pinnacle at Duxton, also a five-room HDB overlooking Singapore, but this time from the 44th floor transacting at $1,088,000. In 2015, there were 12 HDB resale transactions that crossed the $1 million mark. Question number three, what were the significant events in the HDB market for 2015? We highlight two things. First, 2015 November marked the mega launch for BTO flats. 12,000 units were offered for sale, which included 7,000 BTOs and 5,000 balance flats. Next, the highlight from the November launch was the Bidadari BTO. According to SRX Research, a BTO typically trades at an 18% to 33% discount of comparable HDB resale flats in the similar area. HDB has given a discount at the higher end of the range at 29%. Now, question number four. Will cooling measures be eased in 2016? The new housing minister, Lawrence Wong, gave a big hint last October that he has no plans to ease the cooling measures just yet. This echoed the same view given by MAS chief Ravi Menon in July 2015. No one in the public knows. Question number five. Is 2016 a good time to buy? Well, we saw buyers take advantage of the lower resale prices in 2015, coming from increased supply and the effect of cooling measures. This resulted in an increase in resale volume in 2015 compared with 2014 and 2013. With cooling measures expected to still be in place, we expect 2016 prices to continue to come under pressure. Here are the supply estimates. 7,000 units will reach MOP and have the potential to enter the resale supply market. 18,000 BTO units will be launched and 21,000 BTO units will be completed. The reality is that you cannot time the market. So when we are considering whether or not to buy, there are three things that we recommend. First, seek professional advice and financial planning. Second, always buy within your budget. Third, work with your agent to use X value and X listing price to negotiate the right home at the right price. And that's all for today's show. Thank you for watching this episode of XTV. Join us on our next show where we cover the private resale market. I'm Mark Loon and on behalf of SRX, have a good day.